Shalom, welcome to the Jewish Task Force, JTF. I'm Chaim Ben Pesach, and we have another program with the great David Ben Moshe. This week, we've got some major developments to speak about. Benny Gantz, who is the head of the opposition, who was part of a special wartime coalition uh, government, a special wartime emergency government, unity government that they had, is now demanding new elections. Uh, and he's saying the new election should happen no later than September of this year. So there may be Knesset elections this year. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen, but if there, but if it is, we, we've got to be ready because we're supporting Moshe Feiglin and the Zahut party. Uh, the Knesset elections, of course, would be a major new development uh, if they had new elections because of Zehut and Moshe Feiglin and because of who might become prime minister. We could have a prime minister elected, uh, not... Benjamin Netanyahu is a terrible prime minister and a terrible leader. He's not right wing at all. He's a complete fraud. He's a coward. He's a disgrace. He always caves in. Horrible leader. Uh, Benny Gantz, on the other hand, if he becomes prime minister, he's the head of the left wing opposition. He's obsessed with destroying hilltop youth communities. So God forbid we don't want him becoming prime minister. So it's it's. It's going to be a real challenge for us just at a time when the Hilltop youth are stronger than ever because of, the, in large part, because of the assistance that JTF has been providing them. Uh, they, they are in much stronger position than they, uh, than they ever were before. And we'll discuss that in a moment. But in the elections, we would be supporting Moshe Feiglin and the Zehut party. Uh, Moshe Feiglin and the Zehut party will be running if the left-wing Supreme Court doesn't ban them from running. There's always a possibility the left-wing Supreme Court could ban them the way they did with our great leader, our beloved rabbi, Mayor Kahana, Zechret Tzaddik Vekadosh Libracha Hashem Yikom Damo. They murdered, our, they, they murdered our great rabbi Kahana by banning him from running for the Knesset, so he didn't have bodyguards. He didn't, you know, and he went around continuing to speak, and of course, the Arab terrorists from Al-Qaeda assassinated him in New York in 1990 because of that. Uh, but uh, they banned Rabbi Kahana from running, and they banned other people in Israel like Baruch Marzel and Michael Ben-Ari. They banned them from running for the Knesset. They only banned, by the way, right-wing Jews from running for the Knesset. They never ban Arab terrorists. They have Arab terrorists who run for the Knesset. They're allowed to serve at the Knesset. Arab, Arabs who support Hamas, Hezbollah, support the destruction of Israel, they're allowed to run. They were, even the majority of Knesset votes to ban them. The majority of Knesset refers it to the Supreme Court. They shouldn't refer to it. They should just pass a law and that's it. And tell the Supreme Court to go screw themselves. Uh, you know, which means may their name and memory be obliterated. The hideous traitors on that Supreme Court. But instead, they the, the Supreme Court makes the final decision on everything in Israel. The Supreme Court are the real rulers of Israel. It's just insanity. Anyway... We want Moshe Feiglin and the Zahud party to be able to run, and we want them to win if they if they're able to run, uh, and if they and if uh, they get elected, we will have representatives in the Knesset to turn to every time they try to do something to the Hilltop Youth. So that would be a big plus for us. Now you know, I'm in communication with Moshe Feiglin. I speak to him. I advise him, and uh, sometimes he sometimes he takes my advice. Sometimes he doesn't, but. There have been times when he's taken it and he's actually changed his positions on a couple of issues because of because of things that I pointed out to him on those issues. Uh, Moshe Feiglin is the only candidate who says, he's the only one who would be running, who says there is no Palestinian people and there is no Palestine. The entire land of Israel belongs only to the Jewish people because God gave it to the Jewish people. The Arab Muslim Nazis have no right to any part of the land of Israel. They don't even have a right to be there. And Moshe Feiglin says those things. So, you know, and he's taken positions on issues. He's changed his position, for instance, on, on having a normalization uh, treaty with Saudi Arabia. When I pointed out to him that would lead to Saudi Arabia acquiring nuclear weapons, which is the real reason why they don't want normalization with Israel. They just want an agreement where the United States and Israel will give them nuclear technology and, and say it's okay for them to develop nuclear weapons. That's what they're looking for. God forbid that we should have an agreement like that. That will spread the nuclear plague of nuclear weapons all over the Middle East. Then every Muslim country will have nuclear weapons. It would be a catastrophe. A catastrophe for Israel. A catastrophe for the world. For the United States and for the world, if that happens. 
And I convinced the Moshe Feiglin of that. Now he's the only political leader who says that. All the other political leaders say, oh, we want very much normalization with Saudi Arabia, with that Muslim terrorist country, Saudi Arabia. And Feiglin is the only one now who says, I don't want it. I don't want them to get nuclear weapons. That's what they're looking for. They, they still want to destroy Israel, but they and they want to get nuclear weapons. Feiglin now says, says that because, be, and I remember when he was doing podcasts with people advocating for normalization, just like everybody else does in Israel, until we pointed out these things to him. And he said, what you're saying is very logical, makes sense, and, and squares with the facts. So we've influenced him. We've influenced them, and we're having an influence on what's going on. We're having an influence on the political dialogue there. I hope, again, that he's able to run. Now, the Supreme Court, of course, they can ban him like they've banned other people, but now there'd be a little bit more of a backlash since what happened on October 7th of last year uh, uh, on the outskirts of Gaza. That massacre has led to many Israelis saying that that extreme left-wing Supreme Court goes too far and there's a there's a backlash against them. So they may be more reluctant, I hope, that they'll be more reluctant to do something like ban people, uh, ban a legitimate party from running for the Knesset to be an outrage. But How can they ban somebody? Don't the people of a country have the right to vote for, as long as it's a democratic republic, don't they have the right to vote for the candidate they want? Where does the court say, you can't vote for this person because we're going to ban him. You can't even attempt to vote for him. You'll have to vote for someone else. How is that legal? They passed laws in Israel. First of all, even before they passed the laws, the Supreme Court, uh, they gave the Supreme Court, the, because Israelis allow the Supreme Court to do it. <laughs> That's the bottom line. Of course, it's not legal, but the Israelis allow the Supreme Court to do it, just like Americans allow the Supreme Court in the United States to say, that, that gay marriage is legal and, ha and you have to accept gay marriage. Who is the Supreme Court to say that? Or Roe v. Wade. You're allowed to murder tens of millions of babies. Who's, who? These nine, unelect these nine unelected justices in the Supreme Court of the United States can dictate policy to the whole United States and everybody has to follow it. Donald Trump, by the way, unfortunately... Was one of is one of those people who says it's the law of the land when the Supreme Court rules. Ted Cruz said no. Ted Cruz, when he was running against him, said no. We should ignore the Supreme Court ruling. We should not accept gay marriages. We should not accept these other rulings. But you know what can I say? The Republicans picked Trump over Cruz. Very bad move. Very bad move. But anyway, um, the. Um, the reality is in Israel, the Supreme Court goes even further than the Supreme Court of the United States. The chutzpah of these people, it's unbelievable what they do. For instance, the, the Knesset passed a law saying that we should expel the illegal aliens who have come from Africa into Israel. And now and then over 70% of the population of South Tel Aviv are illegal aliens from Africa. So, so <laughs> South Tel Aviv is a crime-ridden, horrible slum now. They've turned it into a horrible slum, a horrific place. And the Knesset passed an election that they should be that we should that they should be removed and they should be sent back to their African countries. The Supreme Court said you're not allowed to. You're not allowed to remove the illegal aliens. The Supreme Court ruled you have to keep them there and allow them to come in. They're refugees. <laughs> unbelievable. Just unbelievable. Um, Why does a first world nation have to bring in all the garbage from the third world? What are we, a garbage collection site? It's, it's, it's unbelievable. The Supreme Court, that's the Supreme Court of Israel. That's, that's what we have there. So I'm hoping, but they are a little sensitive to the backlash that has taken place now. This is a big backlash in Israel now. People realize because of these crazy rulings of the Supreme Court, that's one of the reasons why the Arabs are able to massacre Jews. People are realizing this. So I hope there'll be enough of a, you know, the, that, they, that they'll be sensitive enough to the political backlash uh, because they don't want to lose their power politically. They don't want the Israeli people to rise up and get wise, which is what the Israeli people should do. The Israeli people should throw them out on their tuchuses. But the Israeli people, I, I don't know if the Israeli people will get wise, but 
they're all there's always a certain fear that that might happen they're concerned about that because they know the majority of israelis don't agree with the supreme court decisions and they're they're aware of that they're aware that they are a dictatorial minority ruling tyrannically over a majority of israeli jews who are right wing and who don't like what they what they stand for the majority of israeli jews are right wing anyway um if Moshe Feiglin is allowed to run, then the question is, will he get elected? Will He will he has to win uh, a certain percentage of the vote. He has to win 3.25% of the vote. And as we know from, you know from, uh, from American politics that it's very hard for minor parties or new parties uh, to win. Uh, it's very hard for them to win large numbers of votes because people tend to coalesce around the big parties at the end. So with, with very little money and very few resources, he'd have to win 3.25% 3, 3 of the vote. Even though everybody's, all the establishment people and all the media and everybody's against him and they would be ignoring him and they'd be attacking him and slandering him. So he'd have a lot of problems uh, getting that, but uh, we're hopeful that we can, that, that, that he can get the 3.25% of the vote. That's what he has to get, 3.25% of the total vote he would have to get. And and again, that's assuming the Supreme Court doesn't ban him. If it happens, he would get in, and he'd have there are 120 seats in the Knesset. It's uni, unicameral, which means there's only one house in Israel. It's not like here we have the House of Repres in the United States. You have the U.S. House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate. Um, we have two different bodies in the Congress. In Israel, it's just 120 seats in the Knesset. That's the legislative body, and he. He would have to get at least four seats. 3.25% would be at least four seats. So he would have at least four seats out of the 120, maybe more. I, I would hope even more. As many as uh, we want, the more the better. And that would give us an address to go to every time the Hilltop Youth are in trouble or every time we have problems. Also, he would fight to get me into Israel. He tried when he was already in, when he was in the Knesset in the past. He was just one member of the Knesset from the Likud at that time very courageous he stood against his own party when they were doing crazy things and and Moshe, i'm speaking about Moshe Feiglin and so if Moshe Feiglin gets in this time and has at least four seats he would also try to get me uh, into Israel because uh, he's tried that in the past and he's very strongly supports my aliyah anyway so you know we wanted we would do everything we can to get him elected and we'll begin a big campaign to try to get him elected we're not going to spend money because all of our money goes only to the hilltop youth so we're not going to spend money but we'll do a big video campaign of videos and we already have been doing hebrew videos on his behalf so we'll see we'll see what happens we'll see first of all we're going to see if there if there are going to be new elections i don't know if they're going to be but the head of the opposition is calling for them if there are, then the next few months is going to be quite a struggle. We're going to be fighting to, to get Moshe Feiglin in. That's going to be our big challenge. And JTF will do the best they can to, to run a very clever campaign to support him. We will run a, a campaign independent of his campaign. But we'll run our own campaign on his behalf in conjunction with his campaign. And hopefully it'll lead to positive results. And I think if he's in the Knesset, we can change Jewish history with just him being in the Knesset. I think that could have a big impact. And, and I think JTF can potentially be the group that makes a difference in terms of that. I think the campaign we run could potentially put him over the top because uh, because we do influence people with our Hebrew videos. So that's the story. Um and that's where we are politically in Israel. It could be a very important time for us. And JTF, again, could be playing a very important role. Now, JTF is already playing a very important role with the Hilltop Youth, as you know. More and more Arabs keep abandoning their villages now in Judea and Samaria and abandoning their homes around the Hilltop Youth. Now, this is an ironic situation. This is, it's, it's almost comical. Um... Baruch Hashem, that they're abandoning their villages. Uh, Baruch Hashem, they should all leave. But anyway, um, the hilltop, the 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 Arabs around the villages claim that it's because of hilltop youth violence. They claim the hilltop youth are violent, which is a lie. 
The Hilltop youth only defend themselves. They're not going to go out and decide, we, oh, let's go attack some Arabs tonight. It's a lie. And, and the reason they say that is not because they don't want to do that. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. They do want to do that because the Arabs want to destroy Israel. They would want to go out and do that, but they don't do that. You know why they don't do that? Because if they did that, they'd get arrested and go to prison. They don't want to get arrested and go to prison and have their communities destroyed by the Israeli police and the Israeli army, which is what would happen to them if they went out and did that. So they don't do that because of the legal consequences. And so they don't, they're not violent against the Arabs. The only time they use violence is in self-defense against the Arabs. Now, the Hilltop youth are tough guys. I'm not going to deny that. This, this, is, this is not Schmuck Schumer. You're not dealing with Schmuck who talks like this, I'm Ireland, and I want Israel. I mean, this is this is how he speaks. I mean, uh, you know, Schmuck Schumer, Bernie Sanders, all the others, all the other Jews who say, Israel should make concessions. You know, this is, no, the Hilltop youth are not like that. These are tough guys. And some of them are, some of them, some of them are in their 20s with families already. Some of them are teenagers. Some of them are kids, but they're tough kids. These are tough Jewish kids. And that's true. They are tough guys, but they but they have tremendous discipline and they understand that it would not be wise for them to go out and initiate acts of violence against the Arabs, even though the Arabs are not, even though they're Arab Nazis in Judea and Samaria who want to exterminate every last Jew and who are doing terrible things. Uh, but still, they cannot go out on their own and initiate acts of violence. What they do is they just they just put their 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 they just go out and with their with their flocks and work the land. That's all and expand. And they go right up to the Arab villages and work the land, right up there, right, right next to them. Now, if the if the hilltop youth are not engaging in these acts of violence that are forcing the Arabs out, this is what the Arabs claim. And this is what the Biden administration claims, that hideous, senile pig. This is, and, and that self-hating Jew, Anthony Blinken, Yamashmo. This is what they're claiming, that the hilltop youth violence, that the hilltop, you know, they're the ones that are getting, they're forcing the Arabs out, which is a lie. It's not, that's not happening. So if they're not doing that, then why are the Arabs leaving? <laughs> and the answer is, is almost comical. The Arabs keep reporting and lying and making up stories about hilltop youth violence to the point where they've convinced themselves that the hilltop youth really are violent terrorists, terrible, dangerous people, and we got to get out of here. The Arabs have convinced themselves of this. They've worked themselves up into a frenzy. This is not the first time this has happened. In Deir Yassin, in the 1948 Israel War of Independence, they claimed that the Irgun, that the et, that Etzel, the Irgun, which was the underground group, which was the underground group uh, created by uh, created by Jabotinsky and, and Menachem Begin was the commander of the group. They claimed that Etzel went in and massacred everybody in Deir Yassin, which was a lie. They what they did is they in Deir Yassin they put up white flags. The Arabs they pretended that they surrendered and then they. Through the white flag, they fired shots and murdered the commander of the Etzel as they were marching into, in, into the village. They murdered their commander. So the Etzel guys went and, you know, really did a job on them when they did that. Yes, they did go in and do a job on them, but it was all in self-defense because they were, they were murdering Jews. They were massacring Jews. But the Arabs made up such exaggerated, there were a few hundred people there. And the Arabs turned it into the, like it was a slaughter of 100,000 people. I mean, just not crazy figures and crazy exaggerations and wild exaggerations to the point where they scared the hell out of themselves. Every time the Jews went into battle against the Arabs, if the, it was the turning point in the 1948 war because Israel was so outnumbered at that until, until that point, they were losing the war. But in 1948, in the War of Independence, when seven Arab armies attacked Israel, and the Jews were outnumbered 100 to 1. After Deir Yassin, it was the turning point because all the Arabs convinced themselves that, oh, these Jews are just massacring us. They're monsters. They're crazy, these Jews. They convinced themselves of this with their wild exaggeration and wild propaganda. And so what happened? 
every time there was a battle they would go fleeing they started fleeing the jews after that screaming did you seen did you seen did you seen they were so terrified this is this this literally happened they literally convinced themselves that they couldn't win until then they were winning the same thing is happening now with the hilltop youth they're convincing themselves the hilltop youth are attacking us they're coming into our villages they're da, da, da. things that are never they're not happening none of this is happening all of it is fantasy but they are actually but they have it in their media and they're convincing every they're convincing first of all they're convincing the anti-semitic world that this because most of the world wants to believe bad things so uh, not that it would be bad but most of the world wants to believe that that the Jews are violent and that the Jews are doing all these things. The world wants to believe these things. So there, but the Arabs are convincing themselves of this, and so the Arabs are so frightened of the hilltop youth that they're actually fleeing. They're saying, for the safety of our people, we have to leave. We have no choice. We have to, we have to for safety reasons, we have to leave. And so tens of thousands of them are leaving. Tens of thousands are fleeing Judea and Samaria. And so the hilltop youth areas are growing and the Arab controlled areas are shrinking and they're just abandoning villages. Um, Baruch Hashem, thank God. They should abandon all of their villages. Uh, the, all of their villages should be abandoned. But, but this is what's happening. Now, again, to show you what has JTF given the Hilltop Youth? JTF gave them a little bit over a million dollars in the past three years. What is a million dollars? How many houses can you buy in the United States for a million dollars? The Hilltop Youth have created hundreds. They have hundreds of new people have moved in. To, have moved in. I mean, it's unbelievable. You talk about making a dollar, stretching a dollar. I mean, now it's true they live in very primitive conditions without most cases without heat electricity without running water they live in primitive conditions uh, but because of jtf's contributions they're able for instance to build a water tower so they can they can get water and put it in the water tower so they don't have to keep running back to town five times a day to get water which is what they which was what the situation was before jtf got involved in some of these communities so there are water towers and also there are there are paved roads not paved paved in a you know with 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 uh, paved in a primitive way but at least they're paved to a certain degree and they have more means of communication of, of transportation and they have other things that jtf and they have drones we bought we bought them drones so that they can monitor the arab situation and the security situation so they have greater security now um so a lot of things it's true it's made it easier i mean it's made it easier and by the way jtf is not their only source of income they also raise money on their own as well but jtf is a big portion of that so the battle in judea and samaria is going well for us right now in judea and samaria not in gaza in gaza because the israeli government is in control that's not going well israel is not defeating is not really defeating the hamas terrorists the way they should that's not going well but in judea and samaria the battle to prevent a so-called Palestinian state, a Palestinian terrorist state, even though there are no Palestinians, there is no Palestine, that battle is going well because of the heroic hilltop youth. I hope that the, this election will not bring in new leaders that will create a situation where the battle will not go well. Again, where they will go in and try to massively destroy the hilltop communities in order to, because they know that you can't create a Palestinian state. You can't force Israel to give up Judea and Samaria unless you get rid of the hilltop youth uh, communities there. They are right in the middle, right smack in the middle, cutting off, cutting in half all the Arab territorial continuity. You just, you the, the first problem you have, everywhere you go in Judea and Samaria, the first problem you have, if you want to create, you want to hand over the area to the Arab Nazis, which would be suicide for Israel, but if you want to do that, the first problem you have is of these hilltop communities. And they keep getting bigger and they keep expanding. It's a problem. It's a it's it's a, it's a real problem for for um for the self-hating Jews, the, the the schmuck schumer type Jews in Israel who want to create a Palestinian state. 
So that's the story. By the way, the vast majority of Israelis are against creating a Palestinian state. But just like in America, just like in America, you have a minority that rules over the majority. In America, mo do most Americans want illegal aliens invading America? Tens of millions. Of, I think most Americans are against it. But you have minority, you have a, a left-wing minority in the courts and in the power structure and the bureaucracy that allow this to happen. So you have a minority ruling tyrannically over the majority. The same thing with the transgenders. I don't think most Americans support the transgenders doing everything that's going on and that men should go into women's little into, into bathrooms with little girls. This is insanity. And, 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 and men should compete in women's sports. I think the vast majority of Americans are against this. But you have a minority dictating this policy with the support of the media and the support of the powers that be. They're dictating this policy. And the big corporations in America are part of that minority. And they're dictating to the majority. You have the same situation in Israel. So this is the battle we're fighting. JTF is right in the middle of it. You know, you, if, you, if you love Israel and care about Israel, and all Jews and righteous Gentiles should love Israel and care about Israel. It's, it's the most important battle in the battle for the redemption of final redemption of the world. If you love and care about Israel, you found the right place because there's no group that is more in the middle of this battle than JTF. No group. None. So this is, this is the best place where you could be. Do you want to help change history? Do you want to help make a difference? You can do it by helping the, the heroic hilltop youth, by helping them in their struggle to prevent a Palestinian terrorist state. Because again, this is something that's going to come up. There's going to be an attempt to create a Palestinian terrorist state. We had better strengthen the hilltop youth as much as possible now because we're going to have a very tough battle ahead of us to stop this. The whole world is going to come down on Israel and pressure Israel. It's going to be a very rough situation. The hilltop youth are our hope for preventing this. If you want to strengthen the hilltop youth and save Israel from this catastrophe, there are two ways you can do it. One, you can go to our Hebrew main page, hayamin.org, and you click on the donate button. The Hebrew main page, of course, is in Hebrew, but there is a donate, a big donate button in English on top. You click on the donate button, and in several minutes, you can very easily and conveniently donate online. If you don't want to do it online, you can do it through the regular mail. You can send checks and money orders made out to JTF, and you send it to the P.O. Box, JTF P.O. Box 650327, Fresh Meadows, New York, 11365. You are put in this world to make a difference and make this a better world. This is a way to really directly, directly make it a better world, directly make a difference for the good of the world. And so I hope that our great JTF followers and watcher and people who watch our videos will do so. I hope all of you will participate because uh, this is this is a meaning is something meaningful you can do for the sake of justice, for the sake of truth, for the sake of righteousness, and for the sake of saving the world from disastrous consequences. If God forbid, Israel makes a suicidal decision to create a Palestinian terrorist state. We've got to try to do everything we can to stop that. And we're and this is the this is the way to stop it. David? Well every new president that comes in, it's like they're following a script, they must say. So they everyone that comes in will within the first year talk about a two state solution to the Mid East problem. And uh, it doesn't matter if they're a Republican, or con doesn't matter if they're a liberal Republican, doesn't matter if they're a blue dog Democrat or a, a, an extreme anarchist Demo Democrat. They all repeat, we have to have a two-state solution, when in fact the only solution is to kick the Arabs out. Rabbi Kahana used to say, they must go, meaning the Arabs, because either we will get rid of them or they will get rid of us. And if they get rid of the Israelis, the Christian world is next. They'll be coming after Europe because it's closer. At the same time, they'll be committing acts of terror here because the Muslim religion commands them to kill all Jews and Christians who don't want to convert to that insane religion, Islam.
By by the way, just just to make one little point, I'm sorry to interject. Yeah, go ahead. But just to make one little point, uh, they're not waiting to get rid of Israel. They're already in Europe and setting up zones where police are not allowed to go in. Uh, they have Muslim areas where, where no non-Muslim is allowed to set foot already in Europe. And, they're, and they are already targeting the United States. They're already in the United States. So they're not waiting. They're not waiting. They're, they're moving on their, pro on their program right now already. Yeah, you have Muslim no-go areas in Michigan. Ham tramp, or however you, tramp, however you say it. You can hear the call of the Hassan every morning, and they're allowed to go past what noise level is considered legal by five decibels. The government, when it used to be an American government, wouldn't stop them. They didn't stop them. So that town kept growing and growing and growing as far as the number of Muslims. And today it's a Muslim town here in America. And we tolerate this. They're not here because they want freedom. They're here because they want to be the dominant religion at first and conquest right after that. So if we don't wise up and elect a government that's going to deal with this and get them all out of here, even those that came here legally, we're going to be in major trouble because this country is pulling in 20 different directions and it has no idea which way it's going. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Planet Fitness is doubling down and tripling down on their transgender policy. I'm lucky I, I go to the one here. We will, my wife, Asher Dean, and myself, we were looking to get out. And every gym we looked at, which was a chain, a national chain, or at least a major regional chain, they all have the same policy. The founder of Planet Fitness, his name is Mike Grandel. He said he wanted to create a gym that was family oriented, where the cost was low so a whole family could come. And you didn't have to worry about these big giant muscle guys who are on steroids. You didn't have to feel intimidated by them. So he was, he created the first Planet Fitness and then he became the CEO of the chain when they went public. But then a company called BlackRock came in and bought out so much stock, they were able to kick him out. He said in an interview that he has a daughter. And if he ever found out that there was a man in the woman's bathroom while his daughter was in there, he'd go charging in there get him in a headlock and throw him into the street physically. So it's quite a difference from the people that bought the stock compared to the guy who founded Planet Fitness. I feel sorry for him. The stockholders should demand that they bring him back to be the CEO. But in this country, everybody's asleep. As long as the stock is up, and it went back up because Americans stand for nothing, or it could have been BlackRock bought a lot more shares to drive the price back up. By, by the way, where, where are all these trends? I think in most Planet Fitness places, there are no transgenders. I don't think in most of these places. I, is there one in your in your Planet Fitness there are transgenders? No, but everybody's 80-year-old in my okay. gym. So. No, but there's a Planet Fitness about 10 blocks from my house. Okay? There is a Planet Fitness there. And... Uh, I mean, I see the people going in there. There, I don't think there are any transgenders going in there. I don't think no, so. No, it, it's rare. Neighborhood. It's rare, but there is a corporate-wide policy. And there's something else in there. I wasn't going to report on it, but now that you brought it up, there's other perversions in there. I saw this woman working out. It's on video. It's on YouTube. And she had a young man. She's young and really fit. And she had a young man probably about 20, who was her slave. He had to change the weights for her. And while she's lifting, he had to bow down like a Muslim praying with his head down. And then she went to kiss him right after her lift. And he went to kiss her and she spit in his face. So stuff like that is going on too. And we checked out the other gyms here and they all have the same policy. It would have to be a private independent Jim, not a national or regional chain. 
the LA Fitness, which has huge gyms. Some of them are 80,000 square feet. Same policy. The YMCA, a Christian organization. It, I, don't, I always thought it was Catholic when I was a kid, but I believe it's Lutheran. Same policy. That is y so. YMCA, YMCA is not Christian. They're not real Christians. That's the complete. They're supposed to be associated with, I believe, Lutheranism. They're not Christian. They're, they're so phony. They're so left wing and so disgusting. Yeah, you, don't so remember y money. you don't remember YMCA. You don't yeah. remember. Okay, that was a song about homosexuals. Yes. I mean, come on. That was It was called The it's Village People. Yeah, it's fun to stay at the YMCA. It's, it's been a notorious, the YMCA has been a notorious place for that for, for uh, since before I was born. I mean, uh, you know, that's not a Christian. They're not Christians. You don't see any Christian symbol if you go to the Y. It's totally secular. But there is supposed to be some connection back to, I believe, Lutherans. <laughs> and uh, so they're just going on their own, totally secular and now totally evil. And Disney, I never saw any of the Pirates of the Caribbean. Actually, I believe it should be pronounced Caribbean, because you, if, you're, if you're not sure of the pronunciation, you accent the penultimate syllable, which would make it Caribbean. Mm -hmm. But if Pirates of the Caribbean, okay, with uh, Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow. And I believe they made five. The first three were supposed to be very good. The next two, good, but not great. And now Bob, they brought Bob Iger in to restore Disney, and he's continuing with these G degenerate policies. He is going to have three diverse characters supporting Captain Jack Sparrow, uh, three women of different races. And Captain Jack Sparrow will no longer be played by Johnny Depp. Bob Iger said anybody could play him. Well, that would be like if you were into old movies, if you remember the Thin Man series with William Powell, try replacing William Powell, who was the Thin Man for about nine years before the series grew a little tired. You couldn't do it. Imagine Red Bull Butler, played by Jimmy Stewart. It just doesn't work. You have certain characters, and they are the character. Imagine Raiders of Lost Ark without Harrison Ford. You have characters that make the series, and they are the series. And it just doesn't work, and Iger's going to find out the very expensive way how this works. He's trying to save the company. At least he thinks he's trying to save the company, but actually, in the process, he's destroying it further. And if Walt Disney could see this, he'd be spinning in his grave. I hope, I, hope he, I hope he does destroy. I hope he does destroy Disney. And by the way, people should boycott Disney. Disney is an evil company. They should be boycotted and should also boycott. I don't think any of our people would go to the YMCA. But, uh, but people should boycott that as well. Well, Disney is evil. You notice they uh, took away all the wholesome characters. Everything is diversity and perversion today. And this is they, what they think the American family wants, which is why they're losing a billion dollars. Park attendance is down. Uh, Ashadina never been to Disney World. She's never seen Epcot and the African Safari and the MGM section is quite a few major sections of Disney World now. And she doesn't want to go, and I don't want to take her. I don't want to go either. I've been there in the past, and it's enough. I'm not going as they become more and more evil. I'm not going to support them. You remember the Prince of Egypt? Yes. That, that, that was Disney. That was the, and that's already they many made Moses years ago. a black man. They, they, made, they made him a, an Egyptian. They turned Moses into an Egyptian black man. He wasn't Jewish. And the word Jew and Jewish or Hebrew was never anywhere in the movie. He became an Egyptian, became an Egyptian Muslim called the Prince of Egypt. And it was called, he was called the Prince of Egypt, even though, even though the story, you read the story in the Bible, uh, I don't, I don't think the Egyptians enjoyed what Moses did to them in the end with, of course, God did it. But Moses was, was part of that. I mean, Egypt, he literally destroyed the Egyptian empire. 
by what he did. He crippled and, and humiliated and, 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 and crushed them. Uh, he was not the prince of Egypt, an Egyptian prince. Uh, just, uh, just so obscene, the political correctness, the distortions and the lies and the obscenity. Anyway, boycott them. All should be boycotted. Before that, there was Hercules, cartoon and made by Disney. And Hercules was supposed to be a great hero in Greek mythology. But they turned him into a, a guy who didn't know whether he was coming or going and had to have help to convince him he's a hero. So they're uh, pulling these stories out of their hat just to make it diverse and no difference between uh, right and wrong except a major gray area where you, you can't say this is right and that's wrong. This guy, I don't know who he is. Maybe uh, some of you out there heard him. He's not just a nobody. But I don't know who he is. His name is Kyle Becker. And he wrote this, and this is very prophetic. I don't even feel like the United States has a government anymore. It's just a criminal organization looting taxpayers for trillions, green lighting an illegal alien invasion, and acting as accomplices to foreign subversion by the communist Chinese. Sounds all right to me. <laughs> he sound, makes he sounds sense. like he hit the nail on the head with that. I think so. I don't know. Makes sense to me what he says. The, the key thing here, I think, is that the government is a criminal organization looting the taxpayers of trillions. When was the last time you saw somebody in Washington, either in the House or the Senate or the presidency, that was poor? Who was just they can't be too poor living on that salary of 175,000 plus expenses. But after six years, eight years, they're worth 30, 40 million. How is that possible if they're not stealing? Harry Truman said, You can't get rich in politics unless you're a crook. So they're all crooks and they're stealing from us, and we just sit there and do nothing. Someone who wants to sit there and do nothing either just doesn't care. Or is a coward. They're playing the knockout game again. This time it's not against Hasidic Jews. It's against women. Now that the weather's starting to get nice and a little warmer, they're punching women and knocking them out in the streets of New York. Plus, illegal alien criminal gangs are taking over various streets of Manhattan. It's time for everybody in Manhattan to leave. As I said before on other shows, you could go to North Carolina where the rent is one third what you pay in New York. Why do you have to be in Manhattan? There's a whole country out there. It's called flyover area. Well, let's build that up and make the East Coast and the West Coast flyover area. We don't we don't have, we don't have viewers. I don't think we have viewers. Manhattan is so expensive. Uh, it's insane. I don't think we have viewers in Manhattan anyway. I think our viewers, we have viewers in New York City, but they live on Long Island, Brooklyn, Queens, in the working class area. They don't live in, they wouldn't live in Manhattan. Well, Manhattan is really falling apart. Companies are leaving. Mom and pop shops can't afford the rent. They're leaving. Chain companies, they can't take the theft anymore because they're now operating at a loss. They're leaving. So who's going to pay all this tax dollar that New York City needs to take from the working people and give to those that don't work? Because if there's no working people in Manhattan, where is the tax revenue going to come from? I can tell you why New York City hasn't gone bankrupt. Many, many years ago, New York City should have gone bankrupt to New York City and New York State because of their massive, insane spending and their huge debt. They should have gone bankrupt a long time ago. The reason they don't go bankrupt is because of Wall Street. They're looting. They're looting Wall Street. The Wall Street is is in Lower Manhattan, and as long as Wall Street is there, they have a piggy bank, which which they loot. But I don't know how much longer that's going to be there. They're building Wall Street South in Miami. I guess because of Ron DeSantis, it's a safer area. So they they have a building there with, with a trading floor. And they're expanding it because so many brokers are getting out of New York and moving to that Miami 
business. I, I don't know why all of Wall Street just doesn't say we've had enough. Let's build a few buildings down there and turn that into the financial center of America. Also yeah. online, you know, you can do a lot of that business online now. You don't have to physically, in most cases, you don't have to physically be in a building. Uh, if 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 everything, if, if almost everything goes online and if they do move to places like Miami, which is more business friendly, that's the end of New York. New York will collapse if that happens. Without Wall Street, New York would have collapsed decades ago. Because it's like a communist, New York is like a communist country. It's the People's Republic of New York. It's completely insane. I mean, the spending, the, do you know that New York outspends California by two to one in, in, in education, quote unquote, per pupil? The, the, edu the students they produce are all illiterate. But, but the so-called education system, they outspend California by two to one. And California is also insane. Can you imagine how much? I mean, they give it. There, there are teachers in New York City, in the New York City school system, in the Long Island. There are teachers who make a quarter of a million dollars a year. Quarter of a million dollars a year. For what? That means they're earning more. I think I don't. How much does a president get? I don't even know. What is four hundred thousand? Okay. So they get more than half of the president's salary. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's absolutely unbelievable. The massive, and then massive pensions, huge pensions that they give. Garbage workers, sanitation workers get gigantic pensions. I mean, you work as a sanitation worker picking up garbage. You make 100,000 plus a year. And if you get overtime, even more than that. And then you retire and you get a you get a pension for seventy eighty thousand dollars a year pension because you were, you were a garbage collector. I mean, how can a state or a city like that survive with those types of crazy policies? Just insane. Now California is trying to outdo New York in terms of insanity. They're working on it. They're working on it. Uh, there was in fact they have a, a proposal in San Francisco for fifty dollar minimum wage, fifty dollar an hour minimum wage. I think, can, can I get a job there? I mean, just, it's insane. I mean, just completely insane. 50, they, there's only one problem. There won't be any jobs. Who the hell's going to hire people? And McDonald's are going to $50 an hour minimum wage for, 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 for working in McDonald's? I mean, you know, not that McDonald's, by the way, McDonald's are also closing down in San Francisco because of the robberies and everything else that's taking place. It's, it's well, as the minimum wage went up, they installed kiosks. So you can order and you don't need a person taking your order. So uh, the, uh, by boosting the minimum wage to ridiculous levels, you you have to remove jobs because people that own the places can't afford to pay that. Well, you know what the new technique is for how do you rob a McDonald's? What are you going to rob? Hamburgers and French fries. I mean, what do you do to rob McDonald's? So what they do is they get a job at McDonald's certain category of people, I'm not going to say who, but a certain category of people, they get a job at McDonald's and they empty the cash register and walk out with the cash register. And they don't arrest them now because it's legal to rob under a certain amount in California. In San Francisco, in the California, it's, it's legal. And New York City too? Uh, New York City, not, it's not legal. It's not legal. Well, it's a they, misdemeanor, which but they don't you're... enforce. Yeah, but they don't enforce the law. They don't enforce the law. And and they 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 do they not only that they tell their employees do not stop somebody if they're robbing let them rob. Even in my town, they were they told and there was a big guy in the meat department at the supermarket here. He could have stopped them, but some women of uh, certain women some women certain women came in and stole two hundred and forty dollars worth of baby food. He was going to stop them. And the manager stopped him from stopping them because it's a chain and they have to follow corporate rules. Otherwise, the manager and the employee will get in trouble. So this is insanity. Well, in Florida, they're not as insane. Just the other day, you know, each state is broken up into counties. Uh, you live in Queens County. I used to live in Queens County. And... Uh, here we have uh, Yavapai County, Cochise County, and uh, Maricopa County. Well, in Florida, in one of the counties, each county has a sheriff. 
The sheriff said, if someone breaks into your house, shoot them. Break-ins were down 80% that first night. By, so, the way, Governor, by the way, Governor DeSantis just passed a new law against squatters also. Yes. But we've been speaking about squatters. Another thing, in New York, California, you can break into someone's – and the illegal aliens, the, the illegal alien organizations are telling them, break into their homes. Then they can't get you out because you're a squatter. You become a – you're legally a resident now in places like New York and California. Break into their homes. And politicians are even tell, encouraging the illegal aliens to break into people's homes in New York and in California. Can you imagine this? And you can't get them out. You have court cases and you you fight them for years. They're staying in the house and for rent free, everything free. It's unbelievable. And in Florida, they just passed another law. Uh, another law Governor DeSantis passed against squatters, you know, increasing the penalties even more. By the way, a squatter broke. I did have I had an apartment in Florida, as you know for a while and uh, a squatter broke into my apartment in florida and the police came immediately arrested him he's in he's he's been in jail now i keep getting notices of his court dates and everything else he's been in jail now for i think about eight or nine months already he's been in jail now while while the legal process goes on they got him locked up because he's because he broke into the house they're they're that's 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 the america of ron DeSantis. Oh, how I wish, <laughs> you know what I'm going to say. Oh, how I wish Republican voters had picked him, uh, yeah, you know, him or Ted Cruz or somebody like that. You know, Ted Cruz, by the way, in, in Texas, one, by the way, we never even mentioned this. One very positive thing in Texas that's going on, and DeSantis wants to do it in Florida, too. They passed a law that Texas police now, Texas state troopers can get the illegal aliens and throw them out of the country. Arrest them, put them in jail, and then, or, or even throw them out of the country. Uh, they passed the law. Now, it went before the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has refused to, to intervene right now. It's still in the lower courts. They're still trying to stop it, you know. <laughs> you know, but that would really, oh, that would be great. If, if you could have these local states, you know, where there's still some people who are saying, of course, New York and California are never going to do that. They're going to, you know, they, they have a big welcome sign. You know, the, the only people, the only people unwelcome in New York and California, are people who are law abiding, decent citizens, they're unwelcome in New York and California. You remember Governor Cuomo said the uh, conservatives get the hell out of the state. You remember he said that? Yes. And Sean Hannity said he was going to leave, but he never did. No, he did. He did. He's not in New York. Or anything. I, I don't watch Fox anymore. No. But... Yeah, no, he did. Well, I don't blame you. But no, he <laughs> no, he uh, no, he did leave. He did leave. But um but Cal but but um um they're now passing laws, Texas, this law. If that if the Supreme Court allows this, that that the state of Texas can arrest you and throw you out and state troopers, that that would be a very positive development for the future of, of the United States. That would really be a good development. If you had the squatter in your house in New York. They would have arrested you instead of the squatter. Right, right. So, By the way, years well, ago, years ago, they wouldn't have to. You wouldn't have to arrest anybody. So you come, you come to your house. You're armed. You take a gun out and shoot them and blow their brains out. And it was perfectly legal. You had you had laws which pr protected homeowners. You had laws which were called uh, uh, the owner. You, you know, your home is your castle. You had laws like that which protected homeowners. They could go in. They just blow the guy's brains out. And it's perfectly legal. And the police would say, oh, congratulations, you did a good job. I mean, you know, that was when America was still a sane country. But, you know, now America, you know, now America has turned into a mental asylum, tragically. Bruin case. Where the NRA versus uh, Bruin and the Supreme Court ruled that you are good to go. You can carry a gun. They can't stop you. Only sensitive areas. If they want to stop you in sensitive areas, is that allowed? Like a hospital could be a no-gun zone. Schools, no-gun zone. Uh, restaurants could be no-gun zone. Personal, will you own the business? That's up to you to say guns are allowed or no guns to come into your store. But what New York and California are doing, and 
the, the, I just read this story this week about Newsom and New York City. They made area after area sensitive areas. They made Times Square sensitive. So you can't carry a gun in Times Square. So this is how Democrats get around the law. The Republicans are so cowardly, if the Supreme Court rules against them, they follow it to the letter. The Democrats, if they don't ignore the Supreme Court completely, they at least find ways to get around it. And it has to go through all the courts again before it gets back to the Supreme Court. One lower court judge said these sensitive areas in New York are even repugnant to the Constitution. And uh, still, but he sided with all the other lower courts that sensitive areas, you can't have guns, and it's up to law enforcement to say which areas are sensitive. How could Times Square be a sensitive area? It's a zoo down there. And I see we're past our time. I had a little thing I wanted to talk about. I'll save so I'll save it for next week, how everything was better in the 1950s, except for technology, than things are now, and what it was like living in the 1950s. And I'll close next week's show with that. So I am back to you. In your heart, you know we're right. And in your guts, you know they're nuts. Help us join with us. Let's... Um, Let's make this a better world. We can make this a better world. I'm sorry that I'm a little distracted here because somebody's writing to me from Israel. As I did the show, I got a very important message from Israel, so I'm, I apologize for that. But let's work to make this a better world. Uh, until next week, also for David Ben Moshe, Shalom.